I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Good evening, Great Commission, uh, Baptist Church, to all the members and guests, grace be unto you and may peace be multiplied through God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to our Wednesday in the Word. Amen. Let the church say, say amen. And so our scripture reading is going to come from Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 1, excuse me, verse 19. And before we go and as y'all go to that, I'd like to give a shout out to our pastor, Dr. Douglas E. Brown, and to his lovely wife, Dr. L., um, and then to our Great Commission um, Baptist Church, the members, to the deacons, and to all our guests. Um, and it is good to be here, um, and it is good for us um, to study the revelation of Jesus Christ. So our scripture reading is going to come from Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, and I have a King James Version Bible in front of me. And so, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, listen to these words. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And we are considering the things which shall be hereafter. So, child of God, for the time that I have to share with you, as we consider Revelation chapter 19, um, verses uh, 11 through 21, I'd like to speak from the topic, Lord, come quickly. Maranatha is that child of God, Aramaic word, and we'll get to that. But Lord, come quickly. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Um, once again, Father, we thank you for all that you're doing and we are excited um, to be, come to your house and to be in your presence. And we thank you for the technology you have given us. And even a time like this that we have people who can view us live stream. And so we're grateful. It's so much trash that floats around in those media outlets. But we're, we're, we're happy that we can lift up, lift up your name and that bloodstained banner. So right now we ask for your help. Help us, teach us as we look at this Revelation chapter 19. We trust in you to do what you can do through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Lord, come quickly. Child of God, as we have been journeying through the revelation of Jesus Christ, um, this is where it climax. Um, this is the whole focus. Um, if you look at verse 10, um, the last clause, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I concluded uh, in my remarks in the last Bible study that any and every biblical prophecy it points to Jesus. It's centered around Jesus. And so when people come and they say they have a word, and, and that's how you test that word. If that test has nothing to do with Jesus, I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion <laughs> that they may be jawjacking. We talked about that. They may be practicing. They're just talking the side of their mouth. And so when you talk about this Revelation chapter 19, uh, we talk about, and we talked about the lamb who had been slain. And so now we have a picture and we have an imagery what John gives us and a vision. And, and, and he, he sees in verse 11, and I saw heaven opened. Now, it's interesting. Now, there has been people in scriptures who, at least one person in the New Testament, um, you had Stephen, when he was stoned, he looked up and he said he seen the heavens opened. Um, and he said he seen the Lord standing up. And that's when they began to stone him. It's interesting, right, when you look at that. Matter of fact, when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, it said that the heavens opened up. 
And the spirit of God descended as a dove and it rests upon the Christ, Jesus. And the father spoke, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased So we have in this verse 11, John, he writes, he records, I and I saw heaven open. Now, what did you see, John? He said, and behold, a white horse. And just let me stop there. Now, we were introduced to a white horse in Revelation chapter six. And if you turn back to Revelation chapter six and remember that John talked about a scroll and he weeped because it was no one who in heaven to open that scroll. But then he was told that the lamb who had been slain is worthy to open up this scroll. And remember that the scroll has seven seals. And so in chapter 6, verse 1, John records, And I saw when the lamb opened up one of the seals, and I heard as it were the seals of the seals, and I heard as it were. It were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. In verse 2, and I saw and behold a white horse. Now, unfortunately and mistakenly, people want to identify this white horse in chapter 6, verse 2, with the white horse in chapter 19, verse 11. And so the difference here is as and we, we, we discuss this in the Bible study. The difference is that the one who is upon this horse, um, he set on it with a bow. It doesn't mention he have any arrows. What good is a bow without arrows? Okay. And a crown was given to him. And this crown, uh, Stephanus is the Greek word here, is more like a victor's crown. It's more like a crown that both you and I can receive. Uh, matter of fact, the term comes from the Grecian games. You know, they had a lot of games. We look at the Olympics, but a lot of stuff started in Greece. And so the victor will have a crown. It would be like a, a wreath. Uh, it, it was some, something similar that they placed on Christ's head when he was crucified to mock him as being king of the Jews. So this white horse in chapter 6, verse 2, is not the same white horse in chapter 19, verse 11. Let me read again. And I saw heaven open, and he said, now I behold a white horse. And child of God, when he says that, and I behold uh, uh, a white horse, what is he saying here? You know, uh, what is he trying to, to teach us? Uh, he said that he see the heavens open, and so he sees. So it's just a seeing, and, and he, he, he just a regular seeing. He didn't have to spiritually discern and say maybe this is, or go say search some scriptures. Uh, he saw what he saw. And as I saw heaven open, he's looking in heaven, and, and this is the presence of God because it's singular here. I saw heaven open, the very presence, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. So he said that the person, John said that the person that he sees, uh, the heavens open, uh, is one, behold, sit, and uh, he's seen a white horse. He that sat upon him is called faithful and is called true. And what's beautiful about this is, as we, we look at this, and it says, uh, sit upon the horse, faithful and true. It's faithful and true. Uh, faithful and true. It's only one who is faithful and true. And as we work through the revelation of Jesus Christ, we know that it, that faithful, the faithful, and the truth belongs to God alone. It belongs to Jehovah. You know, it belongs to uh, the almighty God. So, so here it is. And I saw heaven open, and I behold a white horse. He that set upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge, and then he make war. That's what's happening here. Now, the one in Revelation, the rider in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, made war, uh, to, went forth to conquer, but not like this one. Uh, verse 12, listen to these words. His eyes were as flame of fire, 
and on his head was many crowns. Now, so now you get these crowns, many crowns. It's not the Greek word Stephanos. The word here speaks of denodem. And what that is, is a royal crown. And it's not like the fake crowns that when the beasts in Revelation chapter 13 come up and it has ten heads and seven of the heads have crowns, he only got seven. And you could say seven is completion, but what's different here is, listen to these words. It reads better than what I can teach it. Y'all smile. In verse 12, his eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. It's so many you can't even count, you know. And so who could this be? And he had a name written. What was the name that no man knew but himself? Isn't that something? You know, no matter how much we read the Bible, even when we in the presence of the Lord, God is God and man is man. God is God and angels are angels. It always would be some mystery because he is infinitely, infinitely glory. You know, it, uh, it, I'm trying to explain this. I can't even think of words to really describe. You know, we, we try to give some attributes that he's holy, holy and holy. He's wonderful, wonderful and wonderful. We could say glory and hallelujah uh, to describe his nature and his character. But here it said in this verse 12 that the one on this horse, the white horse, who have the many crowns, you can't even count it. <laughs> Y'all smile. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Isn't that something? Now we know, we know when we start talking, oh Lord have mercy, we start talking about that blood. I know it was the blood. We know. When we start talking about that blood, you know, it's something about that blood. But here it is. And he was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name called the Word of God. I got to look in the Greek New Testament, child of God, to see what this said. In verse 13, he said he was clothed and with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And it says, and his name is called Halagas to Theo. Halagos, Lagos. And so we're familiar with that because John also writes in John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, in the beginning was the word. That's the Lagos. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's the Lagos. And so this is his name. The one who is clothed in vesture dipped in blood. Lord have mercy. And his name, I'm getting happy. Is called the word of God. Now, this is why I'm getting happy. Look at Joe verse 14. And the armies, I like this. King James have um, italicized which word, and which suggests to us that they added those words to smooth it out. But really, it reads the armies in heaven. And as we've been working through, and this is why every week I read the same old verse. Reverend Elsie, why are you reading the same old verse? I read the same old verse. I'm going to read it to you again in Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Write the things that thou hast seen. That's chapter 1. And the things which are. That's chapters 2 and chapter 3. And, and which shall be here after. And so hereafter goes from chapter 4 all the way to chapter 18 and really 19, right, and, and, and to the end of the book. And so what we have here is when we look at this, the army. So the armies, the church is raptured, and we're having a Holy Ghost time in heaven in chapters 4 and 5. And so we're there. And matter of fact, we discovered in last week's lesson in Revelation chapter 19, and I'll read it again. Listen to these words. In Revelation 19, now what we have here is when John went to worship, um, verse 10, he said, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. 
You got to appreciate the King James. You know, when, when, when someone does something out of order, instead of you cussing them out, instead of you getting slick, instead of you putting some hands on them, you ought to take these words. What the angel said to John, he said, see thou, do it not. <laughs> he says, I am a fellow servant and of thy brethren. Here we go. That have a testimony. So they're brethren because they're angels who have not fallen. You know, they're angels who have not fallen like Satan and a third of those angels. They have not fallen. But what you have here, and we, we'll get to that in this chapter, but what you have here is they say brethren. So the armies is the church who have been raptured and all his angelic hosts. So, and the armies which word, and I said which, which word is not really there, but the armies in heaven, they followed him. Now, why do you say it's the church? Well, watch this. They follow him upon white horses, so we're going to have white horses too, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, you show me an angel that was given, when you read through the New Testament that's given and that's clothed in fine linen, white and clean, we see that that was given to his bride. Matter of fact, in verse 7 in this chapter, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come for and his wife had made himself, herself ready. So his wife, now, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed, in verse 8, what? In fine linen, linen, clean, and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So we see in verse 14, and the armies, that's the church, that's us. We're going to be with him. It's going to be rapture. You know, the rapture is different than his second coming. You know, you could take his second coming and divide it in two. His rapture, he comes for his church in the clouds. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive shall be caught up. That's the rapture. But in this case, John said he's seen the heavens opened up, and he's seen a white horse. And he said a person sitting on it, in verse 13, was clothed with a vesture. I mean, his garment dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. It's called the Lagos. Of Theo, you know, of God, you know, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it it shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and his treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. Now look at that. Now, he says, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. And when you think about this, now is this something literal, uh, a sword coming out of his mouth? Well, nothing is impossible with God, but just think about all throughout history, uh, all throughout history, a uh, biblical record, Christ, how he showed that he was sovereign. Uh, didn't he, in Mark chapter 4, verse 39, as disciples were scared, they, they were on a boat and Jesus was asleep, and they woke him up saying, uh, save us lest we perish. And when Jesus spoke to the wind, what did he say? He said, peace, be still. And the wind and the water had to obey. The wind and the sea had to obey him. See, this is what we're talking about. Out of his mouth go of a sharp sword. Uh, look at what he said to Lazarus. After Lazarus was dead, as his body was in a tomb for four days, didn't he say, come forth, Lazarus? He says, come forth. This is this sharp sword, right? Um, what about when he hung on that cross? You know, when we consider the cross, and he was on the cross for six hours, and, and three of those hours, darkness was upon the land. The sun refused to shine. Didn't he cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do? That's in Luke chapter 3, verse 34. But what about after that, he said, it is finished, as John recorded in John chapter 19, verse 13, 30, and he gave up the ghosts. And he went, you know, and so, so, but here it is in this passage, we know that his word go forth, that is all is powerful, and what he say is going to come to pass, it happened just like that. But it is, John described this, and out of his mouth go a sharp sword. So now, you know, 
you know, it's one thing to say a sword, a sword, but sharp sword. Why do you sharpen? Uh, why is a sword sharp? It's just not there to be decorative. But then that with it, he should smite the nations. So he, he, it's time to get busy up in this joker. He's about to get busy. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron and tread at the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. You know, the anger of God um, waxed slow. But when it's time for him to judge, now when we read chapters 17 and 18, and particularly chapter 17, when he judged um, the great harlot, you know, uh, and, and he did that, and, and then he took out the city. It says in one hour, one hour. It's real fast. It, it, you know, it's no fight with God and Satan in a literal sense. Uh, Satan is no match, you know. Um, but it is a battle in a sense of how he wants, Satan wants to deceive us and get us away from God. And the battle is with us. And so we are, because we are created in the image of God, that's why it's a battle between God and Satan. But, but, but notice these words. Uh, it says, the wrath of the Almighty God. Uh, the wrath of the Almighty God. And the Almighty, and, and Almighty it, 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 it implies and it, it let us know in Scripture that this is one uh, who have unrestricted power. That's it right there. Uh, and to do, and he and has dominion over everything. So not only is his power unrestricted, but he can exercise it in any way he wants to. It's his prerogative how he does it, right? And whatever he does, it comes to pass. And so verse 16, and he had on his vesture and on his thigh, what did he have on it? A name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's what he is. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. And that's how he has to be. Uh, he is Jehovah. That, that, that Lord is Jehovah, is Yahweh. And it, it says that he is Jehovah. And matter of fact, it, it says King of Kings is it, it, King of Kings. Um, that's King of Kings, and then he says, "Lord, the Lord is is Jehovah mentioned kind of twice, you know." But he's 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 Lord. He's Lord over anybody who said they Lord, you know. He he is the Almighty. He is the self-existing one. <laughs> uh, he is um, undiminished deity and perfect humanity because he's talking about Christ in this instance. Instance. Let me say it again. You know, we know that he's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man. We know he's fully God and fully man. The old text says that he's very God or very God. But Dr. Steve Cook, a brother in Christ I know, he offers that he's undiminished deity and perfect humanity. Isn't that beautiful? Y'all got to give Steve Cook an offering. Y'all smile. And so, so here it is as we push it. What he has on his vesture and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings. It's a lot of people doing this time. Matter of fact, the beast had ten heads. And then we talked about ten kings, and that's what we're going to deal with. Now, he's going to show you that he is King of Kings. He's going to show you in this chapter that he's Lord of Lords. And then verse 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. This is what John said. Now, he's seen an angel standing in the sun. Now, how do you see that? And what does that look like? You know, and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls, that's birds that fly in the midst of heaven. Now, what do he say? Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. Lord, have my, it's about to get really gruesome here. Now, now it's about to get real gruesome. Now, we, we read, uh, if you know your Bible, and uh, when you deal with the children of Israel, that he allowed quail, and he fed them with quail and manna, uh, manna uh, when they was in the wilderness, child of God. And the quail, just, just, the birds just came, and the preacher liked to say, or the black preacher liked to say, two piece in a biscuit. That's what they had, two piece in a biscuit. Y'all smile. Uh, but, but now it's reversed. He said that he seen an angel standing in the sun, 
and cried with a loud voice, saying, Now how do you say to the fowls that can fly in the midst of the heaven? He spoke to them. He says, Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. And then it's a semicolon there. Verse 18. And he, ye, he talking to the birds, the fowls, may eat the flesh of what? Of kings and the flesh of, the, of captains and the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of horses and all of them that sit on them and the flesh, y'all smile, of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Let me rewind and press play. So he told the files, it was an angel, child of God, standing in the sun and cried out with a loud voice unto them, that to the fowls, to the birds that fly in the midst of heaven. He says, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of our great God. Now, he said, now, this is what we want you to do. We want you to eat the flesh of the kings, the flesh of the captains, and of the flesh of the mighty men, and of the flesh of the horses, and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. When it says both small and great, child of God, it's talking no matter what their status is, whether they sitting uh, in the White House or whether they sitting in the crack house. He said, this is what I want you to do. Now, verse 19, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his armies. See, this is the battle of Armageddon. Um, it, that's not mentioned in Scripture, um, the battle of Armageddon, but Armageddon is, is mentioned there in Scripture, but not as the battle. But this is what this is, this is here. He said, I saw the beast, and this is the beast that's mentioned uh, in chapter 17 and chapter 18. Matter of fact, this is the beast um, that's mentioned in chapter 13 that comes out of the sea. This is the Antichrist. And there's one that comes out of the earth. This is the false prophet. We're going to deal with this, right? And real fast. Now notice, child of God, that in chapter 19, we get to the beast in chapter 19, verse 19. By the time verse 21, child of God, comes, the Lord has taken care of these things. And, and on the point I'm trying to make is when we talk about the Lord's judgment, and this is when we say, Lord, come quickly, uh, Maranatha, that's the Aramaic word, Maranatha, that means come quickly to judge. And this is what we should be saying. All judgment, according to the Gospel of John, has been given to Christ. This is what Christ, the Father, has gave him, given him all judgment. And so here it is. We, we want Christ to return to judge, to make our enemies thy footstool, to put to rest all the evil, to put to rest this, this, all these false religious systems, to put to rest um, to wickedness, corruption, corrupt politicians. They act like sometimes they act like they don't have no sense. You look at some of them policies. You know, that's why, child of God, that we got to stay focused on the word of God. You know, um, if, if you think that you vote for someone based on uh, their, their how they look, we call that identity politics. You know, you, you misinformed. You mean to tell me you vote for someone look like you and their policies is Every policy that they have is contrary to the word of God. But you can't stand someone because you don't like the way the other person talk. But his policy reflects God's uh, prerogatives in scripture. We got, we got to think about this stuff. But here it is in Revelation chapter 19. He says, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies. So they ready. They gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, verse 20, and the beast was taken. <laughs> look, look, you know, I mean, you just read this, you know. Uh, it, you cannot exegete the white spaces between this, you know. I mean, it, it reads, they, they got together, verse 19, John said, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies, 
gathered together to make war against him that sat on a hurt, or, um, sat on a horse. And we know that's the Lord. We know that it's the one who is said to be clothed in verse 13 with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. We, we know it's, it's that one. It's that one who is said to be king of kings and Lord of lords. Now, verse 20, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrote miracles. Now, people say, well, the devil can't do miracles. What you do? We got book, chapter, and verse in, 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 in verse, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. You, you know, that's why you got to read your and know your Bible and understand your Bible. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrote, wrote that means that worked miracles before him, which, which he deceived them that they that that have received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both what were cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Some of the translations burning with sulfur. So we said the lake of fire. So this is what we identify hell when we talk about hell in a sense of a person final destination. Destination. There's no one in hell right now. A person who died. Uh, and who was not in Christ. If there was an Old Testament person who died and, died and didn't believe in Jehovah, the self-existing God, they're awaiting their resurrection. They are in conscious bliss right now. There's no occupants in hell right now. There's no occupants in hell right now. The first two occupants, let me read it again, um, Verse 20, and the beast was taken and him with the false prophet, the beast, the beast that comes out of the sea. That's the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13 and the false prophet. That's the beast that comes out of the earth in Revelation chapter 13. Look what happened to him as we read this, that woke miracles, they did miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. That's that number 666. Some of the translations or manuscripts say 616. But, but here it is. And them that worship his image. So not only did they take the mark of the beast, and they took the mark of the beast so they could continue to buy merchandise to take care of their families. You know, they sold out. You know, uh, they didn't hold the line, but they took the mark of the beast and they worshiped the false image that he set up. Now, these both what were cast. They weren't killed, but they were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. These are the things here after. These are things that are still future. So as I close, verse 21 and the remnant, remnant were slain with the sword of him. That sat upon the horse with which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Now watch. Now, this is why John said in verse 17, and I'm done, that he seen an angel standing in the sun. And the angel, more than likely, when you talk about angels, um, not all of them might have, have wings, but some of them we, we, we read about scripture, some of them have wings, right? Um, you have in Isaiah chapter 6, one of them has six wings. Um, seraphims, they call. They, with two, they flew. Two, they covered their eyes. And two, they covered their feet. They cried out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Well, well this angel, John said, was standing in the sun <laughs> and cried with a loud voice and sang on the fowls. This is verse 17, that fly in the midst of the air. Come, gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. And so this is the supper in verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon a horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And so, child of God, as we close out of this chapter 19, what we learn is that the Lord judged. Not only did he judge the harlot that rolled upon the beast in chapter 17, which represented um, a world religious system that's false. Not only did he um, judge the, the city of Babylon, and, and that's just irreligious. Um, this is this corruption at its best. He's destroyed that whole city with any trace of that. And then now what we see here in chapter 19 is that 
He destroys the armies, Satan armies. Uh, he takes the Antichrist, which is the beast out of the sea. He takes the false prophet, which is the beast out of the earth, and casts them into the lake of fire. And they are alive. And so from this point on, it's judgment time. From this point on, and this is why we ought to say, Lord, come quickly. Because when he comes, he's going to take care of all this stuff. So we don't have to run around and plea in the blood and throwing blood and putting oil on everything. Y'all smile and all that. Now, if you think that, that that's more or more effective than the Lord, you know, I'm waiting on the Lord to do that. I'm waiting on the Lord to make my enemy not footstool. I'm waiting on the Lord to judge Satan. Um, matter of fact, in chapter 20, y'all make sure y'all come back. This is when Satan is bound. You know, all this binding and, and stuff we do daily. Say, say, we bind Satan a billion times in a day, and he's still successful. So it's going to be a true binding of Satan in chapter 20.